my youtube my channel today as a part of a virtual teachers day we are going to discuss a topic indian writing in english and indian renaissance introduction so let us take a look at that so what is indian writing in english so it is a special kind of writing from india in english so basically uh, the writers who born in india their english writing consider as indian english in writing uh, in english indian english in writing and uh, the indian renaissance a time when india woke up and changed so the influence of a british which reflected in the literature part of also we will learn about how writing in society changed in india so how the writer what the culture of the india as depicted in the indian literature during the renaissance time that we discuss in this video meet the important people and moment in the journey so we will discuss uh, some of the main uh, a prominent figure of the indian renaissance uh, and take a brief introduction of that and let us start so let us take a look at uh, indian indo indian literature's evolution so the indian renaissance has been started before freedom of india so that's why the pakistan and india was together at that time and that's why the both a place writer are considered in uh, indian renaissance writers so indian anglican literature blends indian and english literary tradition so english tradition and indian tradition both merge in this so we took a language of english and depict our culture our society and our uh, notions and all things in english so with the help of english language we can uh, uh, do that thing encompass work by indian writers in english including the indian diaspora so indian diaspora basically the writers who born in india but who brought up in other foreign country so they are also considered in indian writing in english like uh, there are many writers uh, in this uh, we can put in this list influenced by english literary movement like romanticism victorians georgian and moderns so all this are uh, movements of the time uh, put their impact upon indian renaissance so in the uh, in the 18th century indian indian renaissance has been started at that time in europe there was a romanticism and after that a victorian and all these uh, terms are going on at that time so that all these movements impact we can uh, uh, see in this indian renaissance time literature contribute to global english literature indian writers and rich english literature so they contributed in so before that the indian literature was not something that is uh, reflected in other country so uh, after that after introduction of english language and this indian renaissance our culture and our society uh, reflect uh, in the outer side uh, side of the world too indo indian literature rooted in british colonial era so of course that at that time there, is, there was a british colonialism and uh, we are under the british colonies and that's why uh, lots of influence of british we can uh, see in the indian uh, renaissance literature reflect indian culture values and history so this uh, three main aspect is reflected in it so we can see the culture as well as the history and values of the india in the indo american literature so growth and diverse in theme so who were the early pioneers of indian renaissance so early pioneers one of them is daisy michael madhusudan dutt tagore and sri aurobindo so we we can see that they are almost all they are from belonging from bengal and it started from that and after that in 1930s rk narayan mulkaraj anand and raja rao also contributed in indian renaissance literature so they started depicting indian society culture and values in the indian literature so the pioneers were there and they set the atmosphere for that and after that rk narayan mulkaraj anand and raja rao and other writers uh, give the push to the indian renaissance first indian english novel is raj mohan's wife by bankim chandra chattopadhyay we can see it here so it was a basically a first indian novel which was written in english and it is a story of a uh, one girl who is a housewife and the theme of this story is a kind of love and after that she uh, 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 become a part of a freedom fighter so uh, that kind of a story is depicted in it early non fiction contribution leaders like gandhi tagore and vivekananda so 
Gandhi also has uh, uh, given a great contribution to Indian Renaissance, like his many of his autobiographical work, as well as other works, other essays, other uh, speeches. All these included in Indian writing in English. Other to Tagore, Tagore has a, a, a mark, a great contribution in the Indian Renaissance as well as Vivekanand, so Vivekanand wrote so many things and uh, apart from that he also went outside for that and he provided the speeches on the uh, uh, foreign countries too. So that all the things also, uh, 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 that all the things are also a part of Indian English in writing. Continued growth with Raja Rao, Rabindranath Tagore and others. So that all, they were our pioneers and after that the Indian Renaissance has been begun. So, that it's, it is a great mark that there are a women writers too in that time. So we can find women writer in that time too. So in the European literature when we are saying that in European time the Renaissance was something like at the beginning there was no woman writer in the, that time. But in the Indian time, uh, in the Indian Renaissance we can find it there. So the uh, significant contribution of Sarojini Nairu. Nayantara Sahagal and Rama Mehta. So, uh, the beginning of the women writer, they also contributed in Indian writing in English. And the regional culture and diversity explored by his writer, uh, Kamala Das, Anita Nair and Susan Vishwanath. So, the basic regionality or the basic culture of the India, they started depicting in their works, in their poems, in their novels. So, we can see various diversity because we, our country is a diverse country and there are lots of diversity in it and that's why we have a different kind of culture, a different type of a festival and this all uh, started emerging in the Indian English, uh, Indian writing in English. Novelists like Kamala Markandya and Anita Desai capturing Indian culture. So they captured Indian culture and all the things which was earlier unknown to the world. Now it is getting known by the world by the works of our uh, women writers as well as male writers. English popularity among elite and middle classes. So this is the kind of a thing that, that at that time uh, no, the poor people are not uh, something that are uh, connected with the literature. Only elite class and middle class is connected with it. Because English language is uh, uh, become uh, only, uh, uh, only, uh, only through the elite class and the middle class of the in India. Uh, poor class uh, was far more uh, stay away from that because the English is something considered as uh, the British uh, the thing, so that's why they are uh, staying away from that, and uh, even they are not getting opportunities for learning the English. Indian English uh, as a versatile medium of expressing a uh, diverse human dilemmas and experience. So, before that, we have a rich Indian culture, we have a rich Indian literature, but we are not. Uh, the world is not known about that. But after the this Indian writing and English literature or Indian English literature, we can see that our uh, human dilemmas or our experience, which was earlier in this uh, in in our literature, is reflected through the uh, Indian English in writing through the writers. And then Indian Renaissance in 18th and 19th century. There are a kind of a thing that uh, connected with it. So, uh, as we earlier discussed, that British conquest, uh, India exposed to social weakness. So, India has a, a multiple caste, multiple, uh, uh, multiple states and they have uh, multiple religions. So, based on that, British Britishers can do uh, what kind of whatsoever they wanted to do with the people of India. That's why uh, the, uh, the weakness of the India is that the, they are uh, exploited by the Brit Britishers and that's why its weakness is uh, uh, become a great part of the literature that uh, most of the writers like uh, uh, they wrote untouchables and most of the works are writing about the lower class of the society. So they are also starting about the Indian weakness through the language of English. Indian Renaissance efforts to reform society. So 
we can find that there are multiple uh, multiple societies were developed at that time multiple organization were developed at that time which contribute in reforming the society because they are uh, against the polygamy uh, the sati pratha and all these kind of uh, uh, rituals that going at that time untouchability they were or are, are uh, resisted against all this kind of uh, social norms and they are started reforming the indian society uh, challenge so orthodox of course our uh, social uh, uh, social conditioning was like that at that time uh, even at in the present time but at that time was uh, very uh, in a, a high number so next time uh, we can find the uh, orthodox then caste system and dowry system also were there so all this system are reflected in the literature so that uh, even other countries or other uh, world can know about the indian literature impact of foreign colonialism social uprising and organization for liberation so the various kinds of organization has been developed at that time and also the social change we can see by this english learning and by this english writings uh, we can see the co different kind of uprising of the society and uh, the uh, colonialism's impact is reflected in that that they now we are understanding their mindset their people and their uh, kind of uh, all the strategy and after that we can able to understand the, uh, the strategy and then after that we are started making this uh, this beginning of the freedom fight freedom fight so it uh, also reflect in that so hindu renaissance and literary transformation as we look at the thing that uh, how the renaissance has been started then from the bengal it has started and most of the prominent writer were from there and uh, we can have uh, ravindranath tagore sri aurobindo and so many writers from there after from the bengal because the british were come through the sea lines so the sea lines that's why they are uh, reaching that here and they find that uh, this place is a kind of uh, very uh, high and we can uh, get more money from here so they started implementing their education system there and for, from here that been started and it spread across all over the india the uh, renaissance spirit is spread all across the india so uh, hindu renaissance in mid 19th century centered on bengal tagore bankim chandra chattopadhyay uh, was the uh, were the most prominent figure at that time establishment of a unique literary genres we already have a different kind of a genres and now writers of english uh, indian english writing uh, they are starting uh, experimenting in that and they are uh, contributing in new literary genres emergence of indian english literature during british colonial rule so the beginning has been started at that time after that the so many writers the male and female writers uh, give their contribution to it then early leaders of indian renaissance so here in the picture you can find the very uh, most famous figures of the time that were they all are social religious uh, reformers sir william jones founder of a bank a bengal asiatic society translation and odes so he provided uh, his uh, contribution in translation so he do the translation of indian literature in a very in, in the english language so that our rich literature can transform into other literature so a world can know about the indian literature through the english language then he wrote odes at that time so he was a uh, prominent he was the beginner of this and then we have derisi of course we discussed earlier about the derisi inspired by french revolution criticized hindu beliefs uh, he was uh, most uh, uh, figure uh, he was the one that uh, who criticized most the indian beliefs because the india was at that time was much much more superstitious and in the part of superstition there are a lot of crimes happening and lots lots of injustice and exploitation was happening with people that's why he criticized this hindu beliefs uh, raja ram mohan roy founded of brahmo samaj in 1828 as also he is known as a father of english uh, indian english renaissance and by the founding of brahmo samaj he resisted against sati pratha and all and polygamy and all kind of other uh, social uh, beliefs that was earlier we had ishwar chandra vidyasagar prominent social reformer and keshav chandra sen 
focused on a religious regeneration. So we can find a different kind of uh, literature, different kind of criticism from a superstition. We can find a criticism than polygamy, then sati pratha, all kind of uh, social belief were criticized by the prominent writers. Then there are other influence upon uh, Indian Renaissance too that influential figures and Theosophical Society. Theosophical Society is one of the uh, reformers uh, foundation of the Indian Renaissance and the prominent figure of that uh, Maham Bavatsky and any peasant. So these both are a very well known figure of that time and they established this and with that they provide some of the rules and regulations and so many youngsters. It was uh, basically going on in the college time so most of the youngsters uh, join this group and organization. Ram Krishna Paramhans, influential spiritual figure. So they uh, uh, emphasize upon the spirituality, uh, rather uh, going upon the religion and going upon our social beliefs or uh, supernatural things. They are uh, giving emphasis upon a spirituality which was within the, uh, the uh, person, the individual. Sir Narayan Chandravat. A versatile reformer, influence of Theosophical Society in Madras. So we can, uh, it start from the Madras and then uh, now it is uh, everywhere in the India there are Theosophical Society. Here is the symbol of Theosophical Society. So you can find that they are uh, resisting uh, against the religion. They are uh, uh, providing a snake type of a thing for the religion that they are uh, uh, grabbing, grabbing the people of the uh, society. On the other side, there is a Ramakrishna Mission and Literary Legacy. Swami Vivekananda, of course, is a founder of Ramakrishna Mission. And uh, mission was a spiritual and humanitarian, uh, humanitarian uh, remark. So, uh, it was, it's all rules and regulations are connecting through a human spirit. So, the, you are believing in human, humanitarian spirit, not believing in other God and other things. So, Swami Vivekananda put emphasis upon that. And the key publication of that monthly English journal was uh, Prabhuda Bharata. So that was the uh, main journal of them. Uh, here you can also find the serpent. So we can find, we can connect it to that. At that time, uh, most of they are uh, resisting against the religion and all the things. And they have a similarities because they are celebrating humans rather than celebrating other things of the society or other beliefs of the society. Now we are on our concluding part. The Indian Renaissance was a transformative period in Indian history. So of course this uh, uh, lead to our social reform, social changes in the society. So this is the beginning of the thing and right now we are in uh, a period that it is a flourished and fully flourished and now we are enjoying our freedom. So they are the pioneers of that and they start giving a push to the Indian Renaissance. It addresses social weakness and challenges including orthodoxy, dowry and the caste system as we earlier discussed that they all are uh, uh, giving uh, uh, addressing all this issue of the Indian society. It resulted in emergence of unique literary genres and the growth of Indian English literature. So we already discussed this all part that uh, all these genres are new genres are emerged by that and influential leader like Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Swami Vivekananda and many others paved the way of social and intellectual repentance. The Renaissance not only impacted India but also contributed to the global landscape of ideas and literature. How it can uh, uh, addresses the other things that now we are uh, that at that time that our our culture and our rituals are also known to the world. They are also aware about our uh, culture and all the things. So why did it impact upon world also? So this uh, this impact of ideas and literature is reflected at that time. It's legacy to con uh, it's legacy to continue to shape Indian culture and intellectual evolution. From uh, my side, here is words. Thank you so much everyone for being with me till the end. I have prepared one quiz upon this video and after completion of that quiz you will get certificate and I have uploaded that video in TEDx platform where you can uh, discuss some of the ideas and questions. So I am going to put both of the link in description below so you can visit both of the link in the description below and uh, th that's, all for, that's all from my side and thank you so much for being with me. Thank you.